When we talk about the dangers of modern life, we often talk about junk food with too much sugar and fat, sitting all day, microplastics and different hormone disrupting chemicals or air pollution. But there's one danger that almost nobody talks about and it's silently wrecking your long-term health. I'm talking about artificial light exposure, especially artificial blue light exposure at night. The research is piling up. Artificial light exposure at night is associated with diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer's, heart disease, obesity and depression. Think of it this way. Artificial blue light is the junk food of light. For most of human history, we spent 100% of our time under natural sunlight and infrared light. Now we spend less than 10% of our time outside. And 18% of Americans spend less than 15 minutes a day outside. In this video, I'm gonna break down the science of artificial blue light exposure, how it disrupts your body at the deepest level and what exactly you can do to protect yourself. Natural sunlight consists of many different wavelengths of light. You have ultraviolet light or UV light, the entire visible light spectrum that includes violet, blue, cyan, green, yellow, orange and red light. And then you have infrared light, from near infrared light to far infrared light. Here's the key difference. Sunlight is balanced. The mix changes throughout the day. Sunrise and sunset give you more red and amber tones, while midday has more blue light. Your body evolved with this shifting spectrum, but step inside a building and that balance is gone. Commercial LED lighting blasts you with the artificial blue light, non-stop, day and night. But why is this bad? Artificial blue light at night signals your brain that it's daytime and this interferes with natural melatonin production before bed, resulting in worse sleep. Melatonin is also anti-inflammatory and that's why blue light at night is associated with all these chronic diseases like diabetes, obesity, cancer and Alzheimer's disease. It doesn't stop there. Blue light by nature also causes more oxidative stress and damage to our mitochondria that produce energy. Blue light can also harm the skin and eyes. Blue light isn't a problem in moderation and in small amounts, especially when you get it from the sun. Because from the sun you're also getting red and amber light that balances the blue light. Red light that we get from sunlight or red light therapy devices is especially powerful. It feeds your mitochondria by activating a protein called cytochrome C oxidase, which boosts energy production. Red light exposure has been seen to increase mitochondrial function, support eye health and increase skin collagen synthesis that reverses skin aging. It's exactly what you need if you're exposed to a lot of blue light all day. Red light stimulation has also been seen to lower blood sugar response after eating by 27.7%. The problem is that 99% of LED lights indoors are heavy on the blue light spectrum with virtually no red or amber light. Since most people spend 90% of their time indoors, they're drowning in blue light and starving for the balancing red and infrared light. It's not that blue light is evil. You do need to get exposed to blue light as well to regulate your circadian rhythm, increase your mood and alertness during the daytime. The danger is too much blue light, isolated blue light, blue light at the wrong time and not enough red and infrared light. Another critical component of sunlight is UV radiation and infrared radiation. If we look at the solar spectrum, then UV light and infrared light are on the opposite side of the spectrum. You can't see or feel UV light and you can't see infrared light, but you can feel infrared light as heat. The warmth you feel from the sun is infrared light. UV light is essential for vitamin D synthesis and it's responsible for skin tanning and production of melanin that protects the skin against UV induced damage. UV even produces nitric oxide that lowers blood pressure and supports blood flow. But here's the catch. Excess UV light can also accelerate skin aging and wrinkles. That's why moderation matters. You do need UV light for optimal health and not enough UV light may actually increase your risk of dying. A 2014 study from Sweden saw that avoidance of sun exposure was associated with a higher risk of mortality. They found an inverse relationship between sun exposure and mortality. Those who avoided the sun the most had shorter survival and higher mortality, whereas most active sun exposures had the greatest survival. The study did find increased risk of malignant melanoma from high sun exposure, but it didn't outweigh the overall all-cause mortality risk reduction. So although too much sun exposure can increase the risk of skin cancer, it lowers your overall risk of dying. Most skin cancers aren't deadly. And this study found that the people who got the most sunlight didn't die at a higher rate to melanoma. It's important to realize that this study was done in southern Sweden that gets only about 60 to 100 sunny days per year. It means that Swedes have a much higher risk of vitamin D deficiency than people in Italy or Spain because they get less frequent sun. And the people who do go out of their way to get more sun exposure in Sweden just spend more time outside and they fix their vitamin D deficiency. So the takeaway probably isn't for someone in Saudi Arabia or Mexico or Thailand to just spend as much time outside as possible. 
this study was done in Sweden, so this recommendation would mostly apply to countries like Canada, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Estonia, Finland and Russia. What's the real takeaway? Vitamin D deficiency and lack of sunlight can be a major mortality risk. Even in sunny places like California, Spain or Texas, people can spend 90% of their time inside. So you should make the point to get outside. Now let's talk about infrared light. Infrared light has been seen to penetrate the body and have systemic effects that improves vision. Infrared light also penetrates the skull and helps with brain function as well as melatonin production at night. The infrared light plays a role in skin collagen, elastin and hyaluronic acid synthesis, which all help with skin anti-aging. It's just that you also get UV radiation from the sun, which in excess can accelerate skin aging. So overall, sun exposure is not only important for sleep or vitamin D synthesis. It also provides unique wavelengths of light that are essential for health. The problem is you almost never get these benefits indoors. Modern life floods us with blue light, the wrong type of light, at the wrong time, 24-7, while starring us off the wavelengths that keep us healthy. Alright, so how do you fix this? The first and most obvious step, spend more time outside. Even if it's cloudy, you're getting exposed to the invisible wavelengths of light through the clouds. Go for walks outside every day for at least 30 to 45 minutes. Take sunlight breaks between work. Go out for 5 to 10 minutes several times throughout the day. Open your windows when you're working to let the wavelengths of light bounce into the room. The best time to get exposed to the sun is early in the morning and in the evening. That's when you're getting more red and infrared light that tend to be less harmful. Midday UV light is the most intense and most damaging to your skin, but it's also the time you can make vitamin D the fastest. So try to get most of your sun exposure in the morning and evening and keep midday sun moderate. Next, you should also optimize the light environment of your home. Try to find full spectrum light bulbs that mimic more natural sunlight. Install dimming lights that you can dim down in the evening. Try to make your house more amber and dim rather than blue and bright in the evenings. You can also use rock salt lamps that have a dim light or red light light bulbs that emit only red light. Install filters on your phone and computer that automatically dim down the light such as f.lux or twilight. And lastly, wear blue blocking glasses one hour before bed if you don't have dimmed or red lights available. Small changes to your light environment can have huge payoffs. I increased my sleep score from 75 to 100 by using these tips. But I also made some changes to my diet, exercise and supplementation. Check out my video about how I increased my sleep score next.